coast or yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where I have to the lake on I love Perth. Oh. Oh. I don't like them oh. because oh. I had to take them out twice yeah. or do it at the beginning of the month and then my Middle of the month, like I just don't trust it, and then to get it back was such a pain. So I found a second to keep it, and I missed the gym. Better call them. Did you try the new? I did not. I don't know if that's good. Same to you. No, I earlier. I was just trying to decide. That's why I was because that was back then. So, anyway, just like phones. Well, that's why I was like, well, yeah, that's why I was just like, if you want to do it, you can do it. It was like we were at the end of the month, and we'll spin the computer in it, and it was slower than Target to find the door. I mean, it felt like forever. Somebody's phone went off, and it was a cricket. That was perfect. But if you got somebody that wants it, that's. Good, how are you? Maybe I should listen to the voicemails and they've got You have two new messages and one old message. Coverage is worded. Hello, ladies. It's Savannah Lisa. I know who the local government cooperative. And I want to... Okay, that wasn't the Like, Pam's in charge, though. Looks like. I guess we can... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard good things about when Pam's in charge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Construction has asked us if they, they're going to build a great big power, wind power project up there, uh, up above Goshen, and they want to be able to buy water locally to be able to build their highway. It's going to be quite a large bunch of water. And they want to know if we can supply them with any. They're going to try to get a little bit from Shelly and whatnot, but uh, it'd be better if they could get it from us. I didn't know for sure if we had the ability to do it. I wanted to check and see if we're going to have water shortages this year first off before we commit to anything and then we want to also talk to them about um, the cost of our production. Now we've got this pump over here um, on the far side of town would be the one we would probably dedicate if we were selling water to it 
and so we would want to take that amount of water or that amount of power and calculate it for being able to sell them and then make a profit on top of it for our city. So we're going to have to do a little um, footwork and legwork and I was going to check with the city of Shelley and check with the city of Blackfoot to see what their general costs would be before we would commit to it. If we're going to have a water call from the underground water um, authorities, if we're going to have a water call this year, then it probably, we still, we didn't even get only half of what our about our standard amount is that we can put out. So it's not going to be an issue. We can still put out millions of gallons for them if we want to. And But it's still up to us to decide with it. I need to do a bunch more studying, but I wanted to have the city council up on it before we uh, figure out anything on that one. Okay. Okay. What they're doing again? What is it? They're putting 200 new towers in from the top of Wolverine Canyon all the way over to Taylor. And, and huh? I just, yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, they they've got to build a whole road system from here all the way through there. And so they were trying to, and they're going to have to have compacted roads to be able to drive them semis on to be able to haul them towers on. They got to have pretty heavy duty roads. So, and then they're going to put an infrastructure of wiring and everything else, and this is what the water is for, is for road compaction and so forth. And so, like I said, before we commit to it, I wanted to have the city council on it online, and then we have to figure out what our costs and everything else, and see, because there's no way we're going to get wear and tear and everything else and, and lose money on it. They said, well, city of Pocatello, they said they'd get, 10 cents for every 10,000 gallons, and I'm thinking, it's pretty cheap. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if we'd even, I, we couldn't even consider something like that. So I was going to try to figure out what it was and double the amount so that we could make a reasonable profit. And that's what we would want to have it. Specifically, I'll be able to have it so that I can keep this side of town isolated, isolate that pump system and sell water out of it. And that way, that pump system, whenever they come up, it would only kick on for them. We do have on demand during the summer that we'd have to be paying, and then we do it would have the power. So it would be quite high, the cost of it. So, I'd, like I said, I'd have to do some calculating before we'd ever Can get we up get to a, it. get a, like a copy of what Pocatello charged them? Just well, that's just what he told me. That's like I said. That's I, I would think it'd be a lot higher than that, just from I'm the thinking. pump, just from the electrical costs. Yeah. So. Good. Good. In, in your water rate structure, do you have a, when people go over what their minimum amount is, a cost per thousand after that? The, it's a flat rate. Flat rate. For no matter, regardless of how much they use. Okay. I was going to say that would be where I would start if you had and, a cost and, per thousand. And we report that. each year to the Groundwater Association <clears throat> on how much water we use. And a lot of years we're not even a quarter of the way into what our town is allocated. So. But with an with a extreme underground drought, we have an extreme underground drought situation. This year, there's probably going to be calls. There's no water coming down. I've talked to the Department of Water Resources. There's going to be no charge or no recharge in the aquifers. And so it may be a nightmare thing that we can't do. So, Well, just, you got make sure you calculate in there your cost to put. You're going to want to put a backflow device. And, and a meter there. Well, they, they were going to furnish a meter and everything else. Uh, the back of the so. Having worked construction, every municipality in the state of California where I used to work as a general entry <clears throat> contractor provided the meter for the contractors to use. Mm -hmm. They rented the meter to them, and that way they couldn't, and they, they couldn't mess monkey with it. Mm -hmm. So the meter was rented for the uh, per month. And then it was read per month uh, that report the numbers and at the end of the usage it was calculated in as well. Also, I would consider because what the guy said about the water possible water shortage, any agreement says if whatever it is, says, you know, get a call back, whatever, boom, cut off. Can't do it. Yeah. So that that's where we're at, and that's what they were just asking if we were capable of it, and I said I would First off, approach the city, see if we're going to, if we want to address it. Secondly, then we have to look at long-term costs and wear and tear and everything else. Um, that pump's an older pump. This newer pump that we had over here that went down on me, 
Um, we had it replaced, but when they jerked that new pump open, it was built in 2000 when they had when they was making changeover from the brass, taking the lead out of brass and putting it all over it. During them years, the brass was extremely terrible, and that pump had just disintegrated. So I'm in the process of trying to find a new pump right now, and I'm not finding one. They changed the configuration the way they make them, so I can't find them. But I lucked out right over here in the back of the city building was the old original pump that was in town and I've taken that up and they're redressing it and see if we can put it back in because the way they set up they come out at a certain point and everything else the way the new pumps are they're at a different place so I'd have to completely re-pipe the configuration to get a new type of pump on it and it's uh, anywhere from 28 to 56 weeks to any of the pumps that I've found so far and so I, I haven't really, I still, I'm still looking far and wide for other pumps that are available, but a lot of them have to be made, manufactured for us. So that's why, that's why I'm hoping this one here all works up and everything else will be back in running with the other system. So that's on the other side. This, that's a whole different thing, but I was going to give you a heads up on that. I, it was, the pumps was going to be fairly expensive to buy a new pump. And I was, Tossing up, there was one company that makes them all out of stainless steel. There's others that are cast iron and, and brasses. And the new brasses, they took the lead out and they put aluminum in it in place. So, so it, it used to be it made you stupid, now it just gives you Alzheimer's. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Doug, that's where we are on that one. Do you have a cost account that's going to give you a, a price per gallon? Um, what we've been doing so far? On what you can charge oh, paper. On the other one, the, did you, okay. The variable frequency drive to put a brand new BFP on that 10 horse. And if we have one right now, that'd be running the town. It, it was about, it should come in under $6,000. Okay. So back to, I you misunderstood that, me. That, a, that, co a cost accountant to do the figures for the Bateman Brothers. Oh, I, I'm happy to do that. Do you have a cost accountant one? to do that one? I can I can help you do that if you want. Because there's a lot of costs you're going to need to figure in there. There's and a, a lot cost of accountant's going to tell you what you need. Well, now we have been running this pump over here for a month. And so when she gets the next set of bills, we'll know about what it costs to run it for the month. And so we can calculate against that. For the BFD, it should be a little higher. But then we're going to have on demand. So we'd have to have during the summer months they charge us on demand um, for 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 power companies. So we'll have that. Okay. Uh, and we have to we have to do some calculating on that before yeah. we ever do it. They're not going to start that project until July. Okay, because we got to do depreciation on the pump. Yeah. We're going to do our. Yeah, we're going to have to figure where yeah. they're on the pump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of that has to be yeah. figured in. Does the city own a meter? Huh? Like we don't have to make meters, but so we have little ones, but yeah. and bigger ones about yeah. 300 bucks. Or like a like fire, fire hose size. Yeah, that's the usually is okay. You may want to just tap that in as just giving one for future stuff. Go ahead and get it by one and pass it on your charge. I agree. I guess probably a agenda for, yeah. I the move that we acknowledge that Guy talked to us about being his brother. I don't know. Do you want on the agenda for next month? Yeah, yeah. that's what I would do. Okay. What? So whatever you want to be okay, I can. Okay, no. That's all that's on our Twitter. So yeah. I didn't know you were coming. I'm sorry. Well, guy, guy invited me to come, kind of come talk, help, you know, help talk about the oh, okay. and other thing. He asked my advice, so. We oh, just okay. Are you gonna run up the right? He's a license. He's a license. Yeah. Do you have something you need to tell the council? I just email the mail. I can help. However, you guys. Can you be our cost accountant? I can if you need. I. I don't want to do it. Right. I, um, I, I do that a lot for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> like so, you don't want to get a couple of guys. You've got to run another meeting. Yeah. I've got all sorts of accounting so, programs. I've got all sorts of accounting programs on my computer. Right. Right. Oh, right. I gave you this handout. Okay. Do we want to close with Matt? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mr. Husk. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about Husk. How's the bear good news here with the bill? But just a quick update on uh, you know we've got the final report I've written it we got to go through it one more time just do the final editing and submit it to the EQ on that uh, CP rate test so and everything passed correct they, they, uh, they agreed with well it? one lagoon passed we have to retest the other lagoon oh, in okay. the spring so I remember that okay mm -hmm. so did it fail mostly because we had all that cold temperature or what no, was the deal we failed. had rains we had cold no, temperatures it failed because uh, the uh, the one inflatable plug on the one lagoon, we had the, the level was coming up. So one of the inflatable plugs on the uh, when we did one of the lagoons wasn't sealed on the end on that glitter box. Yeah. It was only stuck out a little ways, but mm -hmm. it was it's, so it's, it's, it's that about, long. Yeah. Oh, I know. And, and it's one of those they're very particular about it. And if I remember right, we voted for you to go out in a suit and go out into the middle of there and. I'm not worried. I'm not worried it's going to pass. You know, I'm not worried it's going to pass. Dive in. Where we're doing. It's just that if the water level is coming out deep, he says we obviously didn't. We can't. We can't make any conclusions about what went on. You know, because the water should be going down because of evaporation or something. So I, I figured it fell more because of the extreme cold temperatures we had. We wasn't evaporating anything. No. It, no, but we were good. I mean, like I said, we were. We had about, four nights there that froze. It didn't freeze. 32, 34. It didn't freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got the, you know, got the temperature log all the way through it. So, right so that it? We're done. Can you talk about anything else? I think we're going to close. So the do meeting. we have to close before they talk? No, it's just not. A, there's no action item. Yeah. So it's just information. All right. So is that next one? <laughs> you ready? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you need another copy? Nope, I'll do that. Okay, so I have a sign-up sheet I needed everybody to sign. If you have a title with the city, please put your title. If you're just a citizen, uh, and if you don't want to put your name on there, you can go an honest citizen. I'm going to do that, okay? You just document this. I'm a contractor. I've been hired by the Bingham County uh, Hazard or Emergency Management Office, and I'm rewriting the county's all-hazard mitigation plan. And part of that requires that each of the communities participate and if you participate, then you're eligible for grants. And so this is your participation in the planning process this evening. Okay, any questions? Uh, I'll go as quick as I can, not to take your time, but if there's anything that you would like more information on or, or don't understand, just stop me and I'll be glad to give you a, okay? All right, so first I need just a general discussion on hazard mitigation, and uh, it's used to protect the public safety and prevent loss of life and injuries to individuals. It reduces harm to existing and future development. It prevents damage to community unique economic, cultural, and environmental assets. And it minimizes operational downtime and accelerates recovery of the government and businesses after disasters. Reducing the cost of disasters and the response and recovery and the exposure to risk for, for first responders. It helps accomplish other community objectives such as level of, <coughs> leveraging capital improvements, infrastructure protection, open space prevention or preservation, and economic resiliency. Uh, mitigation planning is part of the planning process as we need to identify actions for risk reduction that are agreed upon by the stakeholders, and you would be the stakeholders. <coughs> we need to focus our resources on the greatest risks and greatest vulnerabilities building partnerships by involving citizens, organizations, and businesses, increase education awareness of threats and hazards, as well as their risks. We need to communicate priorities to the state and federal uh, officials and align our risk reduction with other community objectives. So our mitigation goals is we need to plan to reduce the hazard. <coughs> well, first, I'll show you in the handout. On the third page, is the main reason you want to participate in this is to make yourselves eligible 
for grant funding for projects and typically the hazard mitigation grants are anywhere from 60 40 to 80 20 90 10 which requires local match but the local match can be in kind or in services or donations and stuff like that so that's just something to be aware of uh, next page is a pretty colored one starts out with pink yellow and red we did a risk analysis based we started with the previous Bingham County all hazard mitigation <coughs> plan and these there were the risks and the threats for your community and then we looked at the history and updated them we looked at historical occurrences the probability the vulnerability the spatial extent is like how much of the community would be impacted and the magnitude you know would the impact be small or large and it gave it a total point score and then we ranked them as high medium and low and of course communicable disease kind of moved to the top because of the COVID-19 I don't know why that would happen like that but uh, severe winter storms was the next one and then the other ones you know just throughout history have been in your community and so I guess the first thing is does anybody have any serious concerns with this uh, hazard ranking for your community yes sir um, seeing we just found out, the city found out that they are responsible for the one bridge down here. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the city limits. If anything were to you know, structurally happen to that bridge from either earthquake or, or erosion from the um, irrigation canal, would that need to be on here as a separate item or included in one of these others? Okay, so a bridge is not a risk. The risk is the flooding, earthquake, right. yeah. that kind of stuff. So I was just kind of wondering to make, make sure on that because it said you have flash flood, but you don't have erosion on here. But erosion is caused by flowing water. So what's causing the flowing water? The normal the flow. Of the just flow. a normal flow through it? Yeah. Uh, probably have floods every year anyway, if you want to count them, right? <laughs> so, Ongoing erosion would be a maintenance issue, not necessarily a risk of threat. But of course, that doesn't matter. This is just the, the known or suspected threats. Okay, then the next section that we're gonna look at, well, you have your goals. I listed both the Bingham County goals and on the back page is your city specific goals. Let me look and see what they were. Communicable disease and severe winter storms and runoff could be a product of that, right? Erosion under bridge. The next one is has a green on it, and this is your uh, your goals and objectives. What you're going to do. So under the communicable disease is you just partner with the county, with the health district, and uh, to address that. The winter storms. We listed that the city of Basalt will develop a basalt. I got to pronounce it right. <laughs> Sorry, <coughs> my wife. Who's a Wapalite? <laughs> <laughs> Reminded me that I couldn't say that it had to be basalt. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, the city would develop methods to protect the life safety of its citizens from harm due to severe winter events. And uh, you know, identify shelters and just work at being having the community prepared. Now, if you would like to add a new one, that's the next blank form. And I would, it doesn't have to be in great detail. This isn't your engineering study and all the rest. This is just uh, kind of like the previous two, is you'd list the hazards. So if you wanted to list erosion on the bridge, your goal is monitor and reinforce the bridge so that it doesn't fail. Uh, or I guess monitor and, and then your objective would be to see that the bridge never failed. And so your project would be to reinforce the uh, pilings or tank or whatever and then uh, the responsible entity could be the city or public works and uh, the cost you put an estimate there so if someone would like to fill that in that's an example of a project other projects uh, I guess you just decide what's a threat to your community uh, and how to mitigate against it you listen to that but you're on the ground you know what local things might be important to you. 
Like an example is up in uh, Idaho Falls, at Idaho Falls High School, they had trouble with the communities around that being flooded when it rained heavy because the sewer line was too small to handle all the runoff water. So their goal was, or what they did to address that is they dug a big pit where the football field was and put in a small outlet. So all the storm drains dump into the football field and it's a buffer, it fills up with the water and then slowly drains out so it doesn't back up everybody's sewer in the whole community. But the benefit to the community is now, because they made the pit for the football field, it's like stadium seating halfway up and they got brand new grass and they made a nice job of it. And they've done that at a couple city parks in Idaho Falls also. So you take an old boring city park with crappy gravel soil and you tear that all out, make it a catch basin, and then you get brand new trees, stuff like that. Uh, another community had some real old cottonwood trees that were in a park and the branches were falling, a threat to the playground equipment. And so the life safety issue is you cut down all the old trees and put in new young ones. And of course, when you do that, well, you probably got to replace all the playground equipment anyway. So you have that money that you put into the project, but now you got somebody else doing a 60-40 split with you, and that's a good deal. So I don't know if you got any other projects. Yes, sir. That's another point of, uh, of contention here on your that chart. Okay. Terrorism is way too high on that list. Way too high. Just you know where I come from. I just retired from Homeland Security. I was the emergency management coordinator. I wrote the plan for Homeland Security. That's way too high on the list. Uh, nuclear event is is a little too high. Well, we're next well, to INL. That's why it came up. Yeah. And it was based on public surveys too. We had public surveys that went out and people rank these. Let me look. So we, never, we never received any surveys. Yeah. Again, they posted it on the website and the county put that information out. But if you would, if everybody here wants to raise your hand and say we want those moved in below, I'll do that for you. Because yeah, I'm looking at the numbers there on it and since hey, it's never happened, <laughs> probability for this location is practically a zero. Um, Vulnerability with everyone that has that owns firearms around here, a terrorist would be stupid to come into a small town like this. Well, they don't have to be successful. I was going to say, I don't think that they're, they're coming in with the thought of, I think it's yeah. on the list saying it well, could happen, this is the probability, not the outcome. It's to be cyber of it. Terrorists yeah. do, do come into small municipalities and target water and wastewater because typically smaller municipalities. Not really. I have all the information from Homeland Security. Yeah, here's small the towns are way matter. down. Okay. Here's the point: it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter where it's ranked. Okay, yeah. okay. just you know, just because I mean, drought should be higher up. But what's the so impact of drought? Does that kill people? It can. It's economic. It's economic. It can, it can impact people. If the water gets shut off, you got somebody on a kidney machine. You got to worry about that. You got other other issues and stuff. So. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So. It doesn't matter if it's the lowest or the highest. Yeah. This was, was updated based on the historical occurrences for this area that we did our research on and from the public input from the public surveys that we had online during the COVID. How was the survey sent out to the, in, to the... It wasn't sent out. It was posted. It was... So nobody in the community, unless they went looking for it, knew about the survey. They post it on the supermarket door and a few places like that and at the library and stuff like that. Again, yeah. it's really minor what the hazards are. Uh, we have no record of anybody dying from drought. Yeah. Uh, historical occurrences is they're there. Probability is high. Vulnerability, not that high. Uh, what's vulnerable to the drought other than the economic? Because uh, we got water everywhere other than you know the quantities for Irrigate. Irrigate. So, and the difference in points is not that much, but unless we have a significant amount of change, okay? I just want to make sure there's not going to be any, any sort of, you know, have an impact later on if something happens. Nope. Okay. The biggest impact would come is a cost benefit ratio. Mm -hmm. Is uh, your project has to have a cost-benefit ratio that's positive, and uh, so that would be better. Other than that, and again, it's, uh, if you have some projects, if you want to write something down, uh, I'll give you my 
phone number, an email address, and if you could get it to me uh, before the end of the month, I will add it to the project list. But it's not life and death. If you don't have a project and don't get it on this, all you have to do is contact the emergency manager and he has a, a meeting and he says, I, I want to open up our all hazard mitigation plan and add this project to it. And when he does that, then your project's eligible. So it's not complicated. The hard part would be your engineering studies and all that misery that goes along with grant applications. But, you know, if you're going to get somebody else to pay for part of your project, go for it, you know. The other thing is you can do a wildland fire mitigation. Uh, you want a new meter and a new pump and everything that you talked about for this other project. Apply for a grant and your purpose is to provide extra water to reduce your fire threat and have the fire department submitted in the meeting that we got coming up at the end of the month. And then you're on two lists to be eligible for grant funding. And that's what you're doing it for. You've got a generator hooked up to that too in case power goes out. You might apply for it. Just well get a generator, a meter, and a new pump out of the whole thing and get yeah. somebody else to pay for parts of that. Okay? Any other questions for me? Thank you very much for giving me your time. Again, if you want to submit a project, my name is Mike Clements, and my phone number is 208-716-7544. And my email is Mike Clements, C L E M E N T S. Okay, I have not shorthand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's Mike. You got Mike in the The standard that's spelling. C okay, I got Mike. C L E M E N T S. Okay. 716 at gmail.com. And I would appreciate if you'd contact me before the end of the month. We're trying to get the plan wrapped up and uh, send it in for review and approval by the State Hazard Mitigation Office and for FEMA. Any other I questions? definitely think that's a great idea to apply for a generator and mm -hmm. stuff like that mm -hmm. as well. I think that's great. So wrap it all into one big project. Yeah. Because see, when we have a fire come through, the power would go out and you'd still need to pump water, right? True. <laughs> True. So <clears throat> that's how you put projects together. You and, well, stack them. It might be advantageous to add a, another water tank onto that pipe so the reservoir of water to be used just in case. Yeah, um, 10,000 gallon, uh, what do you call those for the fire department? That's what those are. Yeah, cisterns. Cisterns, cisterns right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because in case your pump can't keep up, then we'll do that. So all of those things work together. Contact your fire department. Ask them to participate in the meeting. If not, just fill out one of the things and send it to me so you get it on the list, okay? So it's stuff you want to do anyway. We just want to make it pretty. Okay? Any other questions for me? Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And everybody signed the sign-up sheet? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. I didn't mean to get the hassle there. I just, you know, my, 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 my bureaucracy kicked in. <laughs> After 35 years with the state, no problem. <laughs> I'm retired now. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. I move to adjourn the meeting. Yeah. So do we need to do anything on this? No, so just informational. Get. So do we need to put that? Well, how do we do that if we want to put that together before the end of the month? Sounds like you just kind of put a list. Yeah, I just put a list together. I mean, I mean, you can submit it individually. I don't, I mean, it's not a council decision because then if it just it's it's just on the list. Like he says, you can open it up at any time if you come up with something different. Yeah. But if you have something that you can think of right offhand that you want to put in there, go ahead and put it in there. But because we did this presentation, we're already like considered. Well, so he has to go and do a presentation to all the different cities in Bingham County. Okay. Because that's what the feds are requiring him to do. So his job is complete. But as far as the projects and stuff go, that's kind of a, the next step. Oh, okay. But you are eligible for projects because you listen to the spiel. So if you come okay. up with an idea, submit it. Because you're not committing to anything yet because it's a match, remember. So depending on what they came back, you know, obviously if it's a 
80-20, but you've got to cover 80% of it, you may say you can't afford it. So you, you're not committing to anything. You're just getting ideas on the list. So. In case the ranks come up. Yeah. You know, if it's a 90-10 split, they're paying 90% of it, obviously you can do all sorts of things. Right. But it just depends on. Well, I think you're ranked too on that, if I'm not. It's, well, it's not like the LTAC like that. You know, LTAC is yeah. absolutely right. To the, but I, he never talked about just quite how that process worked. Yeah. I was wondering if it was like a, I would think a fire hazard would trump some of that other stuff. You'd think so. Right. But, yeah. Know. But he's, you know, anyway, yeah. so I don't know the details there, but they got all sorts of FEMA money coming out. Oh, so. man. EQ money, FEMA money. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And the match is not hard to make. There's rules to follow match that you can yeah. support. Oh, it's not hard. Yeah. But you know, uh, it was interesting because I didn't thought about it. Because I was asking some like black at schools when they do elementary, most like along the black at river. Yeah. We're talking about trying to do a walkway, you know, kind of well, shoot, yeah. bring it up three feet for flood control, or fire, fire and let them pay for the, the walkway. Oh, there you uh, go. Things like that. Idea. So if you, you know, the football field is a good idea, if, you know, for flood control. You know, if, and I guess you know where this ditch was that you guys had to put the culvert and stuff in. Uh -huh. You know, is there a park nearby that needs some revamping that you could, you know, take it down in three feet? That would be direct that to, you know, things like that if you had any, mm -hmm. something that needed to be done anyway. Are there any game way in? Maybe there's even some things for wastewater if you're worried about flood happening and overloading the wastewater. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, if you had yeah. to burn around those or something. Yeah, burn around yeah. those or even upgrading and making sure that your manholes don't have any, you know, storm water can't get in your manholes or your pumps can keep up. Or, You're going to be busy then. You know, or, uh, <laughs> you know, even your uh, water pits and stuff along your, you know, if you needed to grade those down a little bit, try to make so your storm water could get away a little easier if you want to beautify a little bit that way. You know, any of those, I mean, just kind of think outside the box, but anything like that would be mitigation, you know, flooding from rain or... Yeah. And severe weather, you generators on all your infrastructure? Well, I think the generators are trying to hit, like, Snake River Avenue, I don't know if the church has a full-time generator over here or not, but, you know, any displacement center, because if you did have a fire, well, where's everybody going to go? Right. Well, you know, maybe you team up with the church, and, I mean, they may not approve that one, they got more money than, you know, right. but, but still, those kind of ideas, you could have a full-time, yeah. Maybe yeah. yeah. a generator here might be something that you can yeah. keep everybody warm, maybe. So, who's going to submit this to us? <laughs> I guess that's me. <laughs> Aren't you guys going to give me your ideas before the end well, of the month? I like the generator idea. Like, yeah, if there's a fire in there or whatever, and the power goes out. Or even severe cold, like I've been mm -hmm. at Rexburg when it's like 24 below zero and the power has been out for 15, 16 hours. Yeah. It's like if people don't have heat in their home, they gotta go some sort of stay warm. You know, even this building, like between the two halves, right. you can put on quite a few people yeah, in here if you had to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things you could do on something like that is uh, you know, put in a across the project to put solar panels on the building. So that you don't have as a generator, you have solar panels and a battery bank set up to. Uh, if the power goes out, and actually, if you do, do that on it, you could actually go ahead and switch over to, almost totally off grid. Mm -hmm. That way, it's just an, all, an always on power, you know, you know yeah. sector thing. Yeah, I think that would be a generator. Something to brainstorm about. Yeah. So we got plenty. Well, like I said, we got plenty of time to submit stuff. Uh, you can, all, all the time you have a new project, you can always submit it and make an update their uh, mitigation plan. So. You got anything to get? I think good to get here. <laughs> How do you want us to give you our ideas? Well, you said even we can. Anybody can see. Yeah, them. and I've got the emails. And... Yeah, just submit all that form we gave you. Give it to Tristan. There you go. So once it by the end of the month, so Correct. how am I getting it to you? You can name it Dropbox or email it to me or What's your email? email is <coughs> uh, baseltcc. I need that email. I need to start sending my bills. Okay. <laughs> baseltcc at 
hotmail.com. <laughs> now I officially <laughs> vote to adjourn our meeting. Second. I didn't know I was going to hit the football field to the ground, which could make sense. I don't know. 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 Do you have any other ideas of what we should ask for on this? The, the generator meter, he said something else, but I didn't catch it. Um, because I'm willing to put, an, I mean, I don't know, our firefighters burned down, so I don't know how we're going to get them in on this. The only way we're going to remember them is one thing that you're going to please, I'm sure. Yeah. Mike, Garrett. Oh, right. I don't know that I'm talking to you. A storage tank by this, by the other one up there, you know, water storage tank, at least 10,000 gallons. Um, another 50, in our cities is 50,000, right? Yeah. So another, another 50,000 one up there would, you know, we need to sneak that in. Now in Grand, Grand, that would double. What we were talking about recently, our dreams is to above oh, Drew Jensen's place, there's a field on the way to the team now. And if we were to run over there and run up and keep that as a oh, second story tank, because it, it could can, it can run both. Um, okay. That way, when the power, if the power went out, we would have a residual pressure down of about 35 I knew I had relatives okay. coming in, and they got here tonight. Of course. That's what drove me late. Of course. You help us get the super pump. That's the other one. I was thinking anything like this, we can and consider it as a, as a flooding project. The uh, only flood that we ever really occurred here in town Indians. was back in 63 oh, when the water oh, flooded down the sand creek and flooded that whole oh, country. Really? Basalt didn't get flooded, that's but the other side of the canal had a residual pond. That's standard. what he's doing now. If we yeah. got water coming uh, down over into here, it would. And it, it didn't come in there, it came in over through here with our jets and our aspects. <laughs> And come over down into here and right alongside the town. But it flowed out April. that way. But that was the only flood that ever occurred out here. The Teton flood they didn't get close, all kinds of stuff. Well, it wouldn't that actually have to be just floods. It could be a winter storm where we suddenly get five feet of snow on top right. of the, the uh, and see that, that, that so would that would if we if we had ability to put more pond or ponds out there, then we could do it. So so what do we want to call a sewer pond? We don't want to call it a sewer pond. We want to call it a... We want to call it a flood mitigation pond. Yeah. A retention pond or something like that. Okay. Anything else? I mean, this is our wish list. So um, let's get it. <laughs> so, uh, so, solar power for the city hall. As, as the, you know, basically a solar, solar backup You're system. You're lucky. Or the alternate power would be good if the system went down because the generator would be nice. Well, do you want to feed them things? So the power would be minimal. I'll put both of them in there. I mean, like I said, this is our wish list. We might as well throw it in there. When you find out, I don't know what you want. Yeah. I'll put all this into the paper for any Senator Teresa. My world here is just easier to. Brainstorm really quick. I hope something didn't happen to him. Or For the solar power, you would probably want to uh, produce. I think he had to have shoulder surgery. Uh, uh, just thinking for all for emergency yeah. stuff. All I know um, is I would say you want at least a, a uh, on, bus produce bus uh, 250 amps. I usually do it when he uh, takes trips, power. but. I didn't think it was any for well, I didn't um, ask the because, bus that I Where is he? Yeah. What's the info? This becomes a resource where people need to come some. Um, people can bring the RVs over and plug it okay, in so they have power and stuff. Okay. So you want to have at least 250 amp uh, solar service. Uh, I thought about this for a long time. You know, I think that we can actually ask for that in the brain's replication. So that'll be okay. We just kind of put generic. Clean that all up. Floor, and then when whoever writes the brand, we can give them our actual specs. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. And so, theoretically, if the city wants to save money in the long run, that would just be put both pump stations on solar there. power. Right. I cut, cut, that cut, way, at least going to get a power outage, but have it on 
to it. As a specific kind of backup, but if we take your backup, there's, there's no enough. windows in it, so I had to cut the windows. Then we're not like city yeah. power. I'm out in power, then we're on. I'm out in power, then we're on. We're on. We're on. We're on. We're on. We're on. And everything we're saving will pay for maintenance later on in the project on it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay, let me turn these off.